Okay, welcome. Could I have your attention, please? Could I have your attention, please, up front? Welcome. So welcome to our afternoon speaker series. This is uh, an opportunity to hear two stories, and it's two stories that you probably would never otherwise hear except in a Catholic school. Potentially, you might hear it at your church. It's Sister Linda, and it's Josh French, a 2014 Hill Murray Pioneer alum. And I'm just going to not talk anymore because I want you to hear these two amazing stories. Sister Linda, bring it on up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sister Linda. Okay, students, here we go. I don't know where to begin when I look out there. Why? Because you are wonderful students, and I can tell you are attentive to anything we're going to say. My goal today, yes, you know me as Sister Linda, but now I'm going to backtrack, and we're going to begin with my childhood and what this is about, and how did I decide to become a sister? I didn't decide to become a sister. God decided that I was going to become a sister. When I look back at my childhood, church was not an option. We had to go to church. Is this grades, what, 10 through 12? Okay, then I know how to move forward. Okay, we had to go to church. I remember getting dressed up, having a nice hat and gloves and everything for church. It was huge. I also got corrected for not behaving during church. I remember that. I had a wonderful childhood. I had a nice dog called Foxy. I had four siblings. One is here someplace. Mrs. Albert is my blood sister. Give her some snaps. <clears throat> she is tougher than me, trust me. Okay, I will not arm wrestle her. And when I was eight years old, something traumatic happened in my life. I sat on my mother's lap and she kissed me goodnight and I remember she read me a story. She died in her sleep. Now, I'm not sharing this to say this is going to happen, okay? This is in 1969. We did not have the medical technology that we have today. Your parents are very blessed to have the medical care that is out there along with you. That experience turned my life around. If you want to know the truth, I went from age 8 to 18. I had to learn to become independent. I had to learn to get accustomed to having my father meet my needs, okay? So I grew up through high or grade school. I went to St. Bernard's School. That was a Catholic school, just like Hill Murray. But there was a church. We call it a parochial school. There was a church with the school. And I can remember we started with prayer. Prayer was very important. We would go to mass. We had uniforms. Let me tell you about the uniforms. They were very strict. I had a kneel in front of the principal. And if your skirt did not touch the floor, detention. And we would have to carry cards in our pocket. And you got so many strikes before you could get a detention. Then I had high school. 
And in high school, I felt different because back in the day, I had only one parent. But I learned how to adjust to that. But I'm telling you, it was not easy for me. Why am I telling you this? Because I had to turn to God. The Blessed Mother was my mother. My grandmother, my aunts, were like substitute mothers. It was very important. And then I, I joined band. Yes, that's right, band. I, was, I played clarinet. And I remember they wanted me to try out for the school play, The Music Man, and they wanted me to be the mayor's wife. You know why? Because I can do this. Piccolo, tuckolo, piccolo, tuckolo, cheep, 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 tuckolo, piccolo, more. But I never tried out for that part. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Cheep, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more. Then after high school, I, when I graduated, I'm still at home. Church is not an option. Then, believe it or not, I joined the University of Minnesota Gophers Marching Band. Yes. Now, I can't demonstrate all that. But that was a very good experience, let me tell you. Now, so now I'm in college. And then I got a job. No, I was in college, and then I went to the marching band. Then I went through a stage of anger. I didn't know why I was angry, but I was angry at God. And I thought, you know what? I don't need mass. I'm not going to church. I want my sleep. Why? Why am I going to take my time and go to church? Well... You know why that happened? Because I was angry. And I was angry because I would never dealt with my grief. Never dealt with it. And then I started to go to St. Bernard's for some adult education. And I loved it. But I was dating at the same time. And I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm very public about this. When I dated, there were boundaries, strong boundaries, and I respected those boundaries. That's the way I was taught. I knew the boundaries. But there was something missing when I was dating. And then I went on this retreat about learning how to, about marriage, <laughs> single life, priesthood, brotherhood, and religious life. I went on this retreat saying, I'm going to go look at marriage. Yes, I am. That's my vocation. Why wouldn't it be? I was in six weddings. My sisters were married. They had beautiful children. I mean, I was free babysitting for them too, not to mention. But I saw the love that they had in their marriage and with their kids. Then I started to get nudged. <laughs> Become a sister. No, become a sister. No, become a sister. But I had to do something about it. So I start searching and looking around. And I looked everywhere but the Benedictine community. So I did join St. Paul's Monastery. What would you do if I told you you were going to live with your teachers someday? That's what happened to me. Those sisters at the monastery were my teachers. So I took my first vows. That's like engagement, OK? And then that's three years. Maximum is six years. I took six and a half. Yeah, six and a half. Nothing like taking your time. When I was ready, they were not. When they were ready, I was not. That's how it works. And someday, I hope to share with you the stages and go into those details, because that is a real cool education for you. So took my vows. First vows, Feast of St. Scholastica, 1991. Took my final vows, Feast of St. Benedict, 1997. We vow conversion, stability, and obedience. Yeah, obedience with a capital O. And I have been here at Hill Murray, and I'm going to end with this. I have been here at Hill Murray almost nine years. You pat yourself on the back. You nurture. You fulfill my vocation. 
You are rock stars. And right now, you are being called to be the best student out there. You are called to be a son and daughter. You are called to service. You are called to be a pioneer. Be truthful. I look around, I know I've been there for you. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Never be alone. And if there's a loss in your life, I promise I will be there for you. I get it. I get it. And you are all rock stars, and I want you to know you will go far in life if you can take these tools and put them to practice and turn to God and be with God. Okay? Be with God. All right, that in all things. No, that's too weak. That in all things. Amen. Okay, thank you. Okay, at this, at this time, we will have a seminarian, Josh French. Give him a round of applause. Wonderful. Let's start with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This is from the first letter of St. John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we saw it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. <clears throat> that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing this that our joy may be complete. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for the gift of life. Thank you for all these students here and bringing us together, Father. Jesus, I ask that these students would hear only that which you want them to hear and that I would speak only that which you want me to speak. And we entrust this time in our hearts to you, Blessed Mother, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Wonderful. Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Josh French. And I'm in, currently in my second year of seminary in St. Paul, studying to be a Catholic priest. And today I'm here to do what we just heard from St. John, and that's to share Jesus Christ with you guys. Uh, the disciples, they saw Jesus, and they heard him speak, and they touched him, and they lived with him, and then they shared that joy and the good news of Jesus with others. And I get to do the same thing with you today. And it's really hard to believe that I'm even up here um, sharing about religious life and Jesus because when I was your age, I wanted nothing to do with the church or with Jesus. I grew up in Woodbury, not too far from here, was raised in a Catholic family. Uh, we would go to Mass on Sunday and pray before dinner, but that was about it for me when it came to my faith. And I was not interested at all, and this continued for me when I got into high school. So I went to school here at Hill Murray. Um, I still remember going to Mass in the gym, sitting in the bleachers with all my buddies, messing around, not paying attention, and honestly having no idea what was even happening uh, at the Mass. And so when I was a sophomore, uh, we had a Catholic speaker come to talk to us. His name is Jason Everett, who I love now. He's a great man of faith. Um, but at the time, I wanted nothing to do with him or his talk on chastity. I still remember clearly being in this auditorium right here, and I was sitting back in that back left corner. Uh, nothing against you guys, but that's where I was. And uh, yeah, I wanted nothing to do with his talk. Um, 
<clears throat> so I didn't listen. I didn't pay attention. Um, and as, as I reflect now on that moment in my life, I can see that I thought I didn't need Jesus or that talk on chastity. And I can see now, as I reflect on that moment, that I was actually struggling uh, quite a bit. Even though on the outside, things looked good for me. You know, I had a lot of friends and a wonderful girlfriend. I was good at sports, got good grades. Uh, but in reality, I was just filled with anxiety. The anxiety of trying to fit in, to have to look a certain way. Uh, the pressure of impressing my father by being good at sports. And I also had a lot of shame from the things that I was doing on the weekends just to fit in. And all of this was suffocating and overwhelming. And so as Jesus was knocking on the door of my heart that day when I was a sophomore here listening to that talk, I didn't answer and uh, I said no to Jesus. And I believed the lie that I had to be strong enough on my own. And so as I walked away from Jesus that day, I started on a path that has left me with many scars and wounds. And, uh, and as I left the love that Jesus was offering me, I went searching for love and affirmation and attention in all the wrong places. And in reality, the deepest desires of my heart, they were just to be seen and to be known and to be loved. And Jesus wanted to give me all of those things, but I said no. And so I relate a lot to the prodigal son from Luke's gospel. You guys remember that story? And there's a father who has two sons. And the younger son says to his father, give me my share of the inheritance. And so the father gives it to his son, and then the son leaves his father and goes far away. And this is what I did. I asked God for my share of the inheritance, and I moved far, far away from God. And again, on the outside... Things still look pretty good for me. I was the captain of the hockey team here my senior year, and I received a Division I scholarship to play hockey at Minnesota State University, Mankato. And before I went to college, I played two years of junior hockey in Omaha, and then I entered college. And when I graduated from high school, I stopped going to Mass altogether. And so when I entered college, I was certainly living in the party and hockey lifestyle, and I found myself, just like the prodigal son did, I found myself in want and alone and empty and broken. And this is when Jesus showed up again, most noticeably. He came knocking at my door, and it's when I finally answered and opened it up to him. And it came during my freshman year of college uh, when the third string goalie on our hockey team invited me to a Bible study and uh, I said yes, and that Thursday night Bible study quickly became my favorite night of the week. And even amidst all the success that came with being one of the top teams in the country and all the parties and the many championships that we won, I loved studying scripture and learning how to pray with Jesus for really the first time in my life. I loved going back to Mass and even going back to confession. Um, at that point in college, I hadn't been to confession in probably over eight years. And I still remember the exact night I went back and like, I truly experienced the love and mercy and forgiveness of Jesus and it changed my life. And after confession, I was a new man. I felt alive like for the first time in my life. I was on fire for the Lord and Jesus kept knocking on my door and I kept letting him in more and more now. And I was learning more about the Mass, praying more with Jesus, growing in great friendships. And at the end of my sophomore year, I went on a mission trip to Trinidad and Tobago. The mission trip was, it was amazing. It was full of so much love and goodness from God. And it was on that trip that I heard God asking me if I'd be a priest. And uh, <laughs> it was pretty hard to believe. I mean, I just recently returned to the church. Um, at that point, I had a girlfriend for the better part of seven years, so I thought I was on my way to marriage. Um, and see, so yeah, I didn't know what to do with this desire for the priesthood in my heart. And so I continued to wrestle with this desire for the next couple of years in college. 
Um, by my senior year of college, I had broken up with my girlfriend. And when I graduated, I got offered to play minor league professional hockey in New York. So you might think with me being in seminary that I turned that down, but I didn't. <laughs> I accepted the contract and was getting ready to play pro hockey, but God had other plans for my life. He continued to gently pursue me, and as I was getting ready to start my pro career, uh, COVID hit and everything shut down. And it was during this time and a lot of downtime from a back surgery that I had after my senior season that I finally said yes to God's call for my life. And now after a year and a half of being in the seminary, I've, I've never been happier in my life. And I know that this is exactly where God wants me to be right now. And this is what Jesus wants. <clears throat> Jesus changed me. Because when Jesus looks at you, when you're in relationship with Jesus, he recreates you. And so I'm a new man now. I'm a free man, and I'm free to be the person that God has created me to be. And this is what Jesus wants for each one of you. And Jesus is where true joy and peace and happiness is found. Before I let Jesus into my life, I was, I was dead, and now I'm alive. I didn't know it at the time, but when I was sitting in this auditorium in that back left corner, I was actually in shackles and chains I was a slave to sin and to the world. And Jesus has broken those chains and freed me. And the cool thing about when you share your testimony, it's, it's more than just a story or something that may be inspiring. Our testimony, it actually reveals to us who God is and who I am in God's eyes. And so here are just a few things that Jesus has taught me over the years. And the first one is that God is a good father. Like, he's a good dad. And just like the prodigal son, he never stops waiting for us to come home to embrace us and to love us. And the second one is that Jesus really loves me. Like, truly loves me. Not like, oh yeah, Jesus loves you, like God is good. But like, he truly loves you and he'll never stop pursuing you. He's relentless in pursuing you and your heart. And so God is my father and that makes me his son and this is my identity. It's a, being a beloved son of God the Father. And I am secure and free when I live out of this place of being a child of God. And this is no different for you, my brothers and sisters. No matter where you're at or what you have done, God has a plan for your life. And he loves you so much that he was willing to suffer and die for you. And he wants to heal you and free you and restore you, and be with you every single day of your life. And so this invitation, or this vocation, and vocation is just your calling from God, it's, it's just simply to know Jesus. For every single person in this room, it's just to know Jesus. How do I do that? It's a good question. I'll just throw out a few things that have been impactful in my life that you can do every single day. The first one, just read the Bible. Open it up. The Gospels, it's all about the life of Jesus. Set a timer for 10 minutes and just start reading through the Gospels. It's incredible. Pray. Pray every single day. I had no idea what prayer was until I got to college when I was 23 or 24. But prayer is just simply talking to Jesus as you would to your best friend. That's all it is. It's, a, it's an intimate sharing of your heart with Jesus as he shares his heart and his life with you. Speak to him about everything. Nothing's too big for him. Nothing's too small. He already knows everything, but he wants to hear from you and be with you and bring you life. The sacraments. Go to Mass. Go back to confession if you haven't been. Jesus is truly present in the sacraments. That's why he gave it to us, so that he could be with us always. And he's waiting for you in the confessional to give you life and to heal you through his precious blood. The rosary. It's my favorite prayer. It's, it's a shortcut to Jesus' heart. If you want to get to know Jesus, I carry it everywhere I go. Padre Pio called it his weapon. It's incredible. It's the fastest, quickest, easiest way. So if you're looking for an easy shortcut, the rosary, it will not let you down, I promise you. And then The Chosen. It's a new TV show. I don't know if anyone has seen The Chosen, but it's super good. It's about Jesus and the disciples and 
It's free, so you just search it on Google. It's, it's really good, really good media. And just so in closing, brothers and sisters, here are Jesus' words from the book of Revelation. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. So just open the door. That's all it is. Open the door. It's the best thing that has ever happened to me. I kept the door shut for a long time, and I suffered, and I hurt a lot of people because of it. So please don't wait. Encounter Jesus every day, or let him encounter you every single day of your life. And I just have been asking Jesus, like, what do you want me to say, Jesus? What do you want to say through me? So just leave you with this. As Jesus is dying on the cross, suffocating to death, do you remember one of the last things that Jesus says? He says, I thirst. And this is more than a physical thirst, my brothers and sisters. Jesus thirsts for your soul. Can you hear Jesus speaking these words to you right now? Can you hear him say your name and saying, I thirst for you? He desires all of your heart. Jesus held nothing back as he died on the cross for our sins. And he died out of love for you, to heal you and restore you and free you. Please don't ever let a day go by where you don't spend one-on-one time with Jesus alone in your heart. And let him speak these words to you every single day. I love you, my child. I have redeemed you, and you are mine. Oh, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jess. That was amazing. Just two quick things before the bell rings. Um, Josh mentioned the rosary. So in our chapel, we have rosaries sitting on that little table right when you walk in. If you want to just take one and have one, you can take one and have one. And then there's also little cheat sheets on how to pray the rosary. So it looks like they're sort of meant to stay there, which they, they can stay there. But if you want to just take one and keep it, you can do that. And then if they're empty, we'll get more. So if you're welcome to go down and um, take a rosary and have it, and also grab a cheat sheet. If we run out, we'll replace them. Secondly, during Lent, um, we'll do a couple of win sessions where you can sign up and we can watch a couple of episodes or one or two episodes of Chosen, because it, really it really is pretty good. Um, so we'll do that during when, during Lent. And then also, Josh, we'll just kind of hang out down here if students want to say hello between um, times. Sister Linda, you know, is here. She's here typically after school. And she also has a Hill Murray email. So if you ever want to just email her to connect, uh, she's right there if you want to chat with her right after, too. Um, thank you so much. You guys are headed off to your win session. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.